What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the 20th episode of the Mindless Whore Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony. And I'm the co-host, Jeremiah Reyes. Uh, yeah, I brought Jeremiah on last week. We talked a lot about him, what he likes, you know, what his favorite horror a, movies are. A good are. icebreaker, right? Good little icebreaker. Yeah, yeah that's uh, episode. I, I, I marked that episode 19.5. I saw that. That was, yeah. that was pretty interesting. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to make episode 20 back to news. Uh, and so I want to hear your inputs on some of these topics. First and foremost, we're going to do some intros. Um, this is a segment on this podcast where we – Give shout outs to anyone who who we feel deserves a shout out or anything. Um, so for next week, if you want to shout anyone out just because uh, it's new to you, uh, go ahead and feel free to. I'll write one down. Yeah. Yeah. I got so um, wh- whoever you feel every every time we do this, you want to shout out. This week's shout out is going to be for the League of Extraordinary Vloggers, another group of YouTubers that um, I of uh, good friends with. We hung out uh, this past Monday at Universal Studios as of this recording. Um, I think that was like September 3rd. And we witnessed the extinction of Jurassic Park the ride. Yeah, I like we put that in the words extinction because in and of itself with the dinosaurs. Yeah, how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, <laughs> it, it was sad. I'll be honest, but uh, it, it is what it is, and I'm I'm just hoping that Jurassic World is better. I mean, in, in all the times that it was uh, there, I only I think I only wrote it once, but it was like once. really it was yeah. really fun. It was at like, least you wrote stock, it though. Steep drop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, my, it was my cousin's first and last time riding the ride. Uh, he, he was scared to get on it, but we forced him to get on it just to check <laughs> it out once. I mean, if you're a Jurassic Park and Steven Spielberg fan, you got to at least ride it once. once yeah, yeah, you know, just to experience it. Uh, I, I don't know if he'll get on again for Jurassic World, maybe one time just to check it out. But, uh, yeah, it was sad, uh, but a uh, funny little story. My cousin was wearing an Aliens t-shirt reference. It was mm-hmm. like the weapons kind of uh, company. And uh, me, uh, Thomas, and my cousin George, uh, Thomas being the other guy from the YouTube channel, uh, he we were all going to get on it. We were going to wait like an hour to get on it. But then the guy saw my cousin's T-shirt, pulled us aside, and gave us front of the line. So we ended up waiting like 10 minutes. That's for a shirt? For a shirt, Man, you for a tell reference. Me which shirt to buy? Cause yeah. Again, jump the front so I mean, like you know, if you're if you're yeah, all my geeks out there, you know, <laughs> much respect to you guys. If 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 the guy who Got us front of the line is listening to this. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, that's awesome. But we're going to jump right into news now. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about today, uh, and this kind of was a shocker to, to the both of us when we when we heard about it, but Beetlejuice, the infamous uh, classic with Michael Keaton, is hitting uh, Broadway in March of 2019. Now, I do find that surprising because, you know, for me being a Beetlejuice fan, I, I don't see him singing like... As much <laughs> I don't know, you know, as goofy as that movie is, and as goofy as Beetlejuice is, I can kind of see some singing going on in there, maybe. Yeah. But, uh, but like the whole series of the story. I just don't. I don't know. Broadway is kind of a. It's one of those things where it's like a hit or miss. It could be really good or it could suck. I uh, I hope it hits, and I hope like it makes worldwide news. Beetlejuice. Now, wh- I don't know if it's gonna be. It, now it, they did not say it's a sequel. They just said I think they're bringing the movie and they're turning it into a Broadway. Uh, you got some favorite parts that you would just love to see on stage. I mean, I hope that they that they enter the part where he's at the brothel. You know, he's in his little hometown of the plate that the guy made, and then all of a sudden there's a brothel right there, and he yeah. goes in there and has some fun, and then there's just little demon girls everywhere. That's my favorite funniest part. I think one of my funniest part or favorite uh, parts in the movie was when he uh, is waiting. He grabs a ticket. And he's like number like nine hundred, and, <laughs> and, yeah. like, and it's only on like number five or six. <laughs> and then towards the end, and then yeah, and then and there's the the lady right there, and her legs are sitting right there, and he's getting all like turned on with the legs, and then the girl looks at him like slaps him and stuff. And the girls couldn't have. Her yeah, brother. so that that would be pretty funny. I don't know. Uh, like I said, Broadway's hit or miss. I'm a huge kind of theater Broadway uh, geek. I love. I've seen Wicked and Broadway twice, and uh, that's about the only major theater. No, I've seen Cats, um, but. Just hopefully they um they the character right. who plays Be- um, Beetlejuice like embodies the character that or the actor that played Beetlejuice in the movie. Michael Keaton, yeah, he was such a. There is rumor that they're supposed to be doing a sequel pretty soon, so I hope that comes through. Uh, hopefully, we'll see that in the near future. Um, are you excited to see the Nun? Yes, um, I mean it looks scary. Uh, have you seen that one little Snapchat um <laughs> the Snapchat video that came out recently? It went viral. So was... the kid's taking a Snapchat video. And all of a sudden, the nun appears in the backdrop, right? Oh. And he screams and gets scared. And all of a sudden, the nun appears and screams in front of, in front of the video. And he's still screaming. <laughs> so, 
I, you gotta check that out. That's pretty. I gotta, it's pretty uh, yeah. scary. Yeah, and so was it an ad or? It's on Snapchat. It's a filter. You it's know, a filter. So okay. It's a filter. Um, yeah. So it, as of this recording, it came out. Uh, well, tonight's the, the preview night, but it came out tonight. It's already out as of this recording. Um, and as of this recording, I have not seen it. So I don't know really what to. Uh, yeah, let's to go really see it right now. Let's go see it right now. <laughs> if I had the money, I would honestly. Uh, but. There are six movies that you could watch that are related to a nun kind of vibe. Uh, six scary nun movies, should I say, that you should watch if you really want to see the nun, but you just don't have the money to see it right now. And I have them all right here. Uh, shout out to Bloody Disgusting. These are, this is where I'm getting all my info from. But this one, uh, this first one's called The Sentinel. It's about a blind nun. Uh, it's from 1977. Uh, should be pretty good. Uh, let's see. Before the iconic blind nun of the cover, on the cover of The Devil Inside and the blind, ominous sister death in Veronica, the Sentinel firmly established the blind nun trope as an eerie visual motif. Uh, to say anything further besides providing the haunting still above would spoil the gloriously twisted ending of his classic cult horror film. But with a movie that features appearances from uh, Chris Sarandon, uh, Burgess Meredith, uh, Ava Gardner, Christopher Walken, John Cardine, uh, and Jeff Goldblum. Wow, that's a pretty good cast. Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken. You more <laughs> cowbell. You can't, you can't go on without saying Christopher Walken in his voice. Come yeah. On, it's so iconic. Uh, Jeff Goldblum's in there, too. As one of the creepiest twist endings in horror history, do you really need any further uh, incentive? That sounds pretty interesting. There's another one called uh, Mother Ursula in the Monk. Oh, she's Mother Ursula in the Monk from uh, 1796 and the 2011 version. Wow. Interesting. Is that like a remake? I think it is a remake. Uh, oh, it's based off the 1796 uh, novel. So it is. A, oh, no. So it's a novel. It's a novel. Yeah, and then they made it into a movie. Uh, Sister Marion Eunice from American Horror Story Asylum, the second season. Yeah, that's actually really so if you're interested in that uh sister janine in the devils interesting the unknown nun in vertigo vertigo that is alfred hitchcock's classic now are you saying that we should watch these and then the nun or just in case if we don't we can't go see the nun? if right you now? can't see the nun right now and you really want to see it and you want to watch something that's scary Related to a nun, these are the six movies you should watch. And the last one is The Bleeding Nun and The Monk. So, those are six movies that if you guys really want to watch, uh, just to get yourself either pumped for The Nun, if you're waiting to see The Nun to come out in DVD, you know, if you really yeah. want to just wait for it, those are the six movies I prefer. Or just rewatch the trailers over and over and over again. Or just watch all the Conjuring <laughs> movies, yeah. Uh, the Walking Dead Telltale series, the final season is getting a November release. Uh, you got any memories of this game? Oh my goodness, uh, so sad. I I do remember watching PewDiePie do the playthroughs because uh you know I couldn't I couldn't buy it. Yeah. So I saw him playing it and I was so sad. If you guys don't know of what happens in the story, I will keep it out. But I'm just telling you, like, it's a very interesting uh you know the story arcs with the characters, how they develop and everything. So I've played season one, and I've never played season two. Actually, that's not true. I started. I got like halfway through season two and like never beat it. Uh, then Walking Dead Telltale series Michonne came out and season three came out. Glenn's in it. Glenn's in it. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah like how it intertwines it with the characters, man. Just it's so interesting. And then now this is the farewell season, so this should be pretty good. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how they end it. I like I like how they do. Um, what was it? How they developed the characters now. Because I am seeing like walkthroughs and playthroughs about it, and the definition of the game just in all just it excels how it was last previously. So yeah. Yeah, I I'm hoping after this they work on the Wolf Among Us season two. That's been long overdue. Okay, so they made a game called the Wolf Among Us, a DC Vertigo comic that was about a bunch of fairy tales who lived in like a more R-rated world. So like the big bad wolf from Three Little Pigs is the main character you play as in this game, and he is a detective. Uh, so what? in this game, I think he's trying to hunt down like who killed the pigs, not the pigs, oh. but uh, <laughs> uh, like Snow White and like Cinderella. They're kind of like, should I say whores in a way? Uh, so that's got, how, so that's how they twist. portray them. Yeah, twist. that's wow. how they portray them in the in the thing. So 
we see that he's got to like find out who kills like someone or something like that. It's it's all fairy tale related and stuff. So it's a really good game. They made a season one, left it open for a season two, and season one. I think Wolf Among Us was one of the Telltale's like one of their first games they ever made. They never made a season two yet. That sounds interesting, honestly. Like, have you played the video game of Alice in Wonderland for the PlayStation? Ooh, Alice in Wonderland. Is uh, that the the murder? Well, she's a murderer? Uh, yeah, she's a murderer. She carries a knife. She goes around. Yeah. Killing, like, I've, I've never played it, but I, I've seen gameplay. It's really, it's really good, honestly. Alice, yeah, it's like I Alex know. Madhouse, or I don't remember what that game was. Yeah, I but, think there's like two parts of it, too. I think that, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Um, So, yeah, that that's just sad. I'm going to do a horror death this week. Um... I will see if I can put it on the screen. What is the time slot of this? 10 minutes and 40 seconds. All right. So this week, uh, Horror Death is going to come from... Uh, it's going to be a Halloween one. because, And the reason why I'm making it a Halloween one is because this past week, the new Halloween trailer came out. Now, I don't know if you've seen it. I don't think I have, man, honestly. Oh, my God. I want to say that I've seen it just to go along with the... The wave, but I have it, man. So if you want to, if you want to watch it with me, there's a video on my channel or what? Right now. where I react to it. <laughs> and it's out now. Go watch that video. You too, audience. Go watch that video if you haven't seen it. But this week's kill of the week is going to be obviously one that uh, is from Halloween 2. They're scrapping this movie from the new Halloween movie. But in Halloween 2, there's this one scene where Michael Myers gets one of the nurses and repeatedly dumps her head into a bath filled of like boiling hot water and her face starts to peel as every time he brings it up and eventually kills her so that that's doesn't gonna be... sound good man that's that doesn't sound pleasant or like any good way to die, to die right that's horrible um but michael myers getting creative with his kills so i'm gonna roll that clip for you guys right now and enjoy this week's horror movie death And that was your horror movie death of the week. That is honestly one of my favorites. Um, it was gruesome, man. It was disgusting. I'm disgusting. You. Yeah, it just his uh, the face peeling, everything. It's it's bad. But you know um, what? It, I like how people sacrifice their lives to give us those gruesome deaths. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what makes them so good on screen. That's a good, perfect transition into the new Halloween. So speaking of the new Halloween, we got some uh, awesome Halloween news this week. Um, regarding um, the new Halloween movie, which is scheduled to come out next month, I think October 18th, I believe. And in this uh, news, we got three brand new things. We got a new poster, a new trailer, and we got a new featurette. Featurette talking about, um, of course, the film and everything. And John Carpenter said something very uh, that caught my attention, and that was that this is the best Halloween since the original. The best Halloween since the original. Like, since the first one I that mean, he did. There's been, like, many Halloweens. Yeah. So, that's kind of, like, I don't know. I feel like it's attacking all the other Halloweens because they were pretty good, you know? They weren't that bad. They were. Uh, John Carpenter, being the guy who created Michael Myers back in 1978, did the first two films, and then he came back to do this uh, next film. Uh, every other film after that, another company, another director, writer p picked it up and did it. Um, and I and that's even that's pretty cool to see that John Carpenter approves of this movie. That mm. means that kind of loosens my fear. Like, oh man, this movie won't suck. Maybe this is actually gonna be really good. <laughs> you know, because I was kind of scared. Yeah, like, it settles you in your seat. Like, as as how you want. You know, you don't want it to go waste your money and come back to like, you know what, that movie sucked. Yeah, I didn't kind of want to like. I didn't want to like be another Michael Myers movie where like, damn, this this was all right. It could have been better, but but I'm I have high hopes for this. After seeing this last trailer, I have very high hopes for this movie. So should be good. And then the new poster is really cool. It's uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. She's facing like this way, and Michael Myers is like right here. So it, it's an interesting take because you know that in Halloween two they said that they were siblings, but then in Halloween one they never mentioned that they were siblings at all. And uh, in, in this new Halloween, they said that they're not siblings. So it's just Michael Myers trying to come back and kill uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's character, Laurie Strode, again. But within that 40 years that's happened, Laurie Strode has become, some would say, a badass. 
She's been training. She's been training. She's, been she's training got, her butt off. She's, she's got, got her house booby trapped, ready to go. She's got lights Sounds around the whole <laughs> perimeter. She's got guns and everything. She got little panic rooms and stuff. It's it's insane. I know what this is. This is that rated R version of Kevin McAllister in Home Alone One. This is exactly what that is. <laughs> or Home Alone Two. Except this is Kevin McAllister's mom. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, it I should see be. Where this is going. It should be good though. I'm very very much looking forward to watching this movie, seeing what they have to offer, and uh, hopefully. Hopefully, and they said this is going to be the last Halloween movie, but I hope this movie does so good that they spawn out maybe a trilogy or franchise. That, of they, it. that thing about it. you know what? We need to make more. Yep, that's easy money maker. So, yeah, that, that's your Halloween news. Uh, we got some major Halloween Horror Nights Orlando and Hollywood news. Um, and when I say that, I mean we got our first look at the inside of Stranger Things, the maze. Of what's gonna be inside of it? Wait, I don't want any spoilers. I'm gonna cover my, I'm gonna cover my ears. Oh, <laughs> uh, you don't want to know what's inside of it? Have you not watched Stranger Things season one? Yeah. Well, then it's not really spoilers. It's just what's gonna. It's be just in the like season. a recap of everything. In a way, yeah. I mean, I mean, they kind, of, they showed, they released images. All right, fine. I'll listen. But do you want to see attention. the? Do you want to see the images? No. Oh hell yeah! Give me, pass it here. <laughs> Let me uh, look up the video. But uh. <laughs> Orlando has an, uh, an original maze they're doing over in Orlando, of course, called um, Cinema Sins. Wait, right? Is that what it was called? I think it's like Cinema something. Cinema Slaughter. I'm sorry. Cinema Sins is a first Cinema Sins is a, another a YouTube, YouTube channel. Yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, it's right. Cinema, Cinema Slaughter, uh, they release photos. So here's the photos first of Stranger Things. Um, if you want to, you can just scroll through them. I've already seen them many times. But they're, they, they're bringing back some iconic scenes. from. They're bringing them to life, and I like that. Oh, wow. Look at this. So in the first one, we have the iconic ABC. A living the room. wall, like yeah. the Ouija board in a way. Up. Yeah. Uh, secondly off, we have uh, – is this – this is the room. Oh, I'm not sure which room this is, but it's – I think it's case. Will's room. Will's room? Yeah. yeah. I call him Willie. Oh, Willie. Willie. Is this the other side of – yeah, this is the upside down, isn't it? Of where? What are we looking? Oh, the that down is the the little play hut thing that they have. I want to say either it is the upside down or that's actually their play hut, but yeah, that's what that's supposed to be. They have the Hawkins Laboratory. It's pretty Hawkins sick. Laboratory. Yo, you can walk around the laboratory. That'd be pretty sick if you could. Inside. I would. My theory is that's where the portal for the upside down is going to be, and that's how we're going to enter the upside down. I did a construction update this past week on my channel, and in that construction update, I got both nighttime footage and daytime footage of the Stranger Things. It's going to be inside of a sound stage, uh, and in there we saw the opening facade, and it looked like it's going to be the um, facility. You know, I hope so because uh, the demo. I know the demo dogs. Was it that are they play a big role inside? Inside of the labs. So You're talking about the demogorgons, right? Yeah. Yeah. The I like demodogs, the demodogs. The I like calling them the demodogs because that's how um, your yeah. boy named them. What's his name? I forgot it. I think it was uh, I forgot all their names. I just know Will because Will got killed or not killed, got taken. See, I know Will and Eleven. Um, but that that was uh, that and uh, and I'm really looking forward to that. And of course, uh, if you're out in Orlando, they release a slot a uh, cinema slaughter pictures uh and that looks pretty cool orlando's theme this year is supposed to be the 80s the 80s so they're gonna do a lot of 80s themed stuff over there one thing they're doing over there that i'm extremely jealous of um and if john murdy the guy who does halloween Horror nights here is correct and stays to his word um this year at orlando they're doing a killer clowns from outer space uh no way scares okay them. I'm excited for that one, and I'm kind of jealous as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm jealous. But when I went to the Midsummer Scream panel, um, John Murdy, who does the creative director stuff uh -huh. for uh, Hollywood, said uh, just because they get it this year doesn't, doesn't mean, mean we're, you're not going to ever get it ever. We're going to get it. We might be getting it next year. I hope so. And uh, a perfect example is that uh, it was last year as a scare zone, Orlando got trick or treat. Uh, and this year, we're getting both the maze and a scare zone. Oh, so right. I can see it maybe next year. We'll probably get hopefully the same thing, a maze and a scare zone. Because not only would I love to see the killer clowns in a maze, but in a scare zone, I would just live there. Because that is one of my <laughs> all-time favorite freaking horror movies. And from what I've heard from one of my other uh, 
YouTube friends. Uh, his name's Eddie Tainment. Um, he told me that every 30 minutes or so, they have this projection system, which they're going to shoot off like a wall or something, and that's going to project uh, the clowns leaving in their tent and taking off, just like in the movie. You know what? I really liked the, um, the Killer Clowns from Outer Space. It was very iconic to me. Uh, you know, you had your clowns from back then, and it was Pennywise, and then these clowns. But I like these clowns more because... You know they make sounds, right? Yeah. They make they make like real like alien, uh, alien sounds. Yeah. And this is what stuck to me, like yo, like I'm not I'm not only scared of clowns now. I'm scared of fucking aliens that dress yeah. up as clowns or just yeah. aliens itself. Um, and I, I I was really hoping we were gonna get killer clowns at the event for Hollywood this year because this year killer clowns from outer space turned thirty. Um, that iconic movie turned thirty, and they've been talking about the original uh, guys who made the movie in the you know the eighties. They're talking about in the next year or two that we're supposed to be getting like a sequel for that movie. We were supposed to begin it on the twenty fifth anniversary, but now they're talking probably about a year or two down the line, and I'm I'm very excited for that. It took him a while. It took him just a little. It took him about thirty years, <laughs> but you know we're here. So you know what though, I have a feeling with today's technology, the tent and everything would be awesome. I hope so. I mean, I hope they actually set up like a big wide tent that you could probably walk through and everything. Yeah. Like. That'd be pretty cool. Hey, they've done it before. The intro was amazing. How they kill the clowns and just take their take their suits, man. Yeah, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. I'm I'm really looking forward to this maze. Hopefully in the future, and I hope it's as good as I remember because I remember it being greater than it was, and I mean it's still pretty good. Dog, you ever need a refresher? Got it on the Blu-ray. I'll take you up on the offer. Take me up on that offer. Yeah, this was a special cover that I got for the blu-ray when i bought it on amazon can i see it and you can actually take that out and have the original cover and stuff but i, I like that cover better um but yeah i had it that's a must on blu-ray i have a lot of uh, i'm trying to get my horror movie collection up again um or not again i never had a horror movie collection but just trying to get it up uh to more but yeah next thing we're going to talk about is is kind of a sad one and it happened as of this recording uh yesterday because we're already on friday uh, iconic actor Burt Reynolds died. Did you see that? Yeah, the smoke. I remember him from Smokey and the Bandit uh, 1 and 2. Uh, yeah. Sadly, he wasn't in the third um, one. You know what? Sadly, I never watched uh, a lot of his old style like movies and stuff he, he came out in. So a lot of the stuff I remember him in were stuff that I grew up watching, like the remake of The Longest Yard with Adam Sandler. Mm. He was the coach in there. But he was also in the original one, and he played Adam Sandler's character. Um, I also remember him in the remake of Dukes of Hazard. He played Boss Hogg, um, and he was a, he was very good at that role. But my my most iconic memories, and it wasn't even Burt Reynolds that uh, was this character, but in Saturday Night Live they always made fun of Burt Reynolds, and they had the they had one of the guys who did a, a phenomenal impersonation of him, and he named himself Turd Ferguson. But he was always coming out on the Celebrity Jeopardy skits, so. Um, the most of Burt Reynolds that I've ever known was from Saturday Night Live, and it wasn't even Burt Reynolds. So, um, it's just sad to see an actor go, though, man. At 82, he had I know he had bad heart problems and stuff like that. Yeah, they, they were saying it's because of the roles he took that made his heart, like, weak or something. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah that sucks. Yeah, I, 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 like I said, though, it's always sad to see an actor go, um, except, unless they were very shitty in this world. <laughs> I mean, even still, they're all creators. Yeah, they're all creators. Uh, and when I say very shitty, it's like people who... Unless they're like, you know, assholes, you know. Yeah, assholes or like <laughs> serial okay, killers. Okay, then I feel you. I understand. Serial killers, something like that, you know, I don't know. Um, but yeah, Burt Reynolds passes away at 82. We lost another legend in Hollywood, and may his soul rest in peace. Injustice for All is one of Metallica's greatest uh, albums to date. It's not the greatest album, but it's one of the greatest albums. And it is getting remastered. Now, there's a there's a thing about this album that not a lot of people know, unless you're either a diehard metal fan or a diehard Metallica fan. But in this album, there is very little bass. And with that being said, is because they were going through a transition of getting a bass player, so they didn't have a lot of bass recorded into this album. They only did about a couple songs with bass, and they play those songs today on tour. But... A lot of people's major question about when they were remastering this album is, are they going to add bass? And Metallica's answer to that was no. no. I knew it. 
because they feel that if they add bass, they're going to basically create a whole new album in a way, and they don't want to ruin the original album. So when they remaster it, they're just going to make it a lot more clear, and it's going to sound a lot more legit now and stuff like that. And I'm very much looking forward to this. They've remastered already Kill 'Em All, Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, and this is their fourth studio album. Um, and just for all, I think came out back in 1988 or 89. So, um, yeah, very much looking forward to this. Are you, uh, you're not really a metal fan though, are No, you? but I appreciate the decision of what they made. And in all honesty, like, they're sticking to the work, they're sticking to what they did, and that's, that's a huge decision, you know? Either you appease the fans or you go with your gut and say no. Yeah, I'm very looking, I'm very much excited that they're not really changing much, so... Gonna look for. I got two picks up there from James Hetfield and Kurt Hammett, the lead guitarist and the lead singer, that when I saw them in San Diego. So, always gonna be there, man. Um, what's next? John Carpenter, back to the horror legend. He is getting four movies with the 4K remaster, and they're all classic horror movies or action movies that are uh, just iconic today. Uh, two of the first two are very iconic. Escape from New York uh, is iconic. So, yeah, Escape from New York's getting a 4K remaster. The Fog, They Live, and Prince of Darkness are all getting re 4K remasters. Um, when I go back and think now, John Carpenter created some of the most iconic and best movies of all time. I think it's uh, the reason being it's the feel of the movies, man. I'm telling you, if you don't catch a feel for a movie and you don't feel scared of what he presents then it's not a good movie like for me like one of my favorites is the fog the reason being um you know you're little you grow up and then you see the fog that he interprets with the demons or the ghosts the you know escape pirates that yeah. they're, they're after they start killing people because you know they're on a mission they're here to take back what's theirs yeah but you still get scared of hey the fog there's something in the fog right now being little i grew up saw this movie we're scared of fog shitless. All right. Oh yeah, when I when I go to the beach or when I would see fog, I would just always think, "Oh my god, there's going to be people coming out killing us." Or you stay, uh, you, stay, you stay the hell away from it, right? Yeah. That's I, what it, it it puts it inside your head and you're just like, "You know what? Now I'm scared of this." That's what makes a great movie. It makes you scared of something that you weren't scared of before. Another thing, another good example of that is uh my stepdad every night in October will put on Halloween 1 and 2, mm-hmm. you know, and just watch them uh every night in October either 1 or 2. And he says when he wakes up for work in the morning, it's still dark outside. So he says when he goes out, when he goes across the street to his truck, he looks both ways and stuff, make sure my house is not falling. Because you know you just you're just that paranoid, uh, you know, from stuff of being a little some, kid. Some psycho is just gonna come. Yeah. Your ass. So yeah. you don't even know. Um, and with the fog, I think that that established a lot of fear for the fog. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Jaws. A lot of people don't like to go in the water because of that, you know. And it's just stuff like that. Another movie that uh, is an iconic movie, and I, I'm probably gonna get a lot of shit from never seen it is they live uh it's another iconic one uh my cousin sit keeps telling me to watch it all the time and i have to sit down and finally watch it and i i can't really tell you what's it about because i've never seen it <laughs> but don't look at me we're both gonna get you yeah for this. so so uh from what i've seen though it's like uh one of the most famous shirts is watch tv and then when they watch the tv like they turn into skeletons or that's one of the most famous logos or you know promos i've ever seen for this movie so i can't really tell you much about it because we've never seen it so we'll probably have to sit down and watch it eventually um escape from new york that's a good movie i don't know if you've ever seen that no man they made escape from new york and escape from los angeles and uh kurt russell one of the the greatest actors of all time is in the movie and he plays like a badass in there and it's like post-apocalyptic and stuff like that so it's it's a really good movie it's, are we it's, talking about mad max apocalyptic almost it's got that kind of a vibe but in the same time it's like mad max meets like pirates and stuff i mean they don't they're not all pirates but like the way they live and stuff like that that's just kind of how they live in this and they look like pirates <laughs> well, the main character, uh, Kurt Russell, wears an eye patch. Uh, I think because it has something to do with him losing an eye or something like that. But um, it, uh, nonetheless, they're fantastic movies. And then The Prince of Darkness. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this is the one with darkness in it. Um, Prince of Darkness. I, I don't remember if I've seen this or not. Isn't the Prince of Darkness always like you know Lucifer, Satan? I was thinking of Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> <laughs> but if this is the movie I think it is, then I've seen this movie too. But the movie I'm thinking of is uh, has uh, this movie is called uh, Prince of Darkness. Okay, this is not the movie I'm thinking of. The movie I was thinking of was I think it's just called uh, Darkness. 
And in that movie, it's about a devil with, like, the long-ass horns and stuff like that. And I think it's played by, um, what's his name? <laughs> Tim Curry, I think, plays him. So, yeah, I, that's not the movie I was thinking of, though. Or So, Prince of Darkness is also getting 4K remastered. Not seen that movie either, so I might have to check that movie out, too. It's a good thing they're all coming out in 4K because now 4K we can all sit down and them all together. In beautiful 4K. Um, next thing we're going to talk about, how big of a fan of American Horror Story are you? Um... Uh, I would say about 50%. 50, so like you've, you've seen, seen some seasons, seasons I've though. seen some seasons, yeah. Um, I've seen it here and there. Um, the only reason I started watching it because at the time I had a girlfriend and told me, oh my gosh, you have to come watch me American Horror Story. Um, they just uh, roll casted Adam Levine and he dies in it. What season was this? I think it was, Do you uh, remember? It was in the asylum. Okay, I've not seen that season. But I heard that. was That's, that's the guy, guy from Maroon 5, 5 right? Yeah. Okay. I was surprised that he was inside that episode. I was just like, what? Yeah, that someone told me about that. Um, I think my my YouTube buddies, the league, they told me that, um, and I was so surprised to find out that I gotta watch that season in Coven. Coven, I should start watching Coven because the new season uh, next week starts off with season one and season three crossover. Luke. They're crossover, mm -hmm. and so it's called Apocalypse. They finally released some footage, uh, some teaser trailers of who's gonna be in it, what we're supposed to be seeing, and stuff like that. It's le it's a legit apocalypse. Like, and a nuke goes off and blows up they go in an underground wow. bunker and there's these weird ass people and stuff like that and then the people from coven come in people from murder house come in so i'm very much looking forward to this season it should be pretty good um i don't know if you watched uh so the seasons i've seen is season one four five and six and seven um and that's uh murder house uh freak show uh hotel roanoke nightmare and cult uh cult and hotel and murder house are by far my favorite seasons hands down yeah, hands down so far. But I have not seen Asylum and uh, Coven yet, so I should not say too much because they, that could change easily. And I've heard a lot of good stuff about those two seasons. Like, those are really good seasons as well. So I might watch Coven first. And that's the thing I like about American Horror Stories. You don't got to watch them in order. You can watch any season you want. Really? Because, well, I mean, there's I always minor tie-ins. I but... always felt that they in themselves were like their own thing. But now yeah. that they... With the new series coming up, that they're yeah. gonna intertwine and you know they're gonna match up and interloop. That's that's yeah. that was new to me. So and I think with the intertwine, they might just be intertwining characters and maybe some story arcs. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if the, I don't, I can't really until I watch it. I can't really. <laughs> so I gotta watch Coven and Asylum, and then I watch then I watch have watched all of them. So see now now you got people saying Infinity War was the greatest co crossover of all time, and then American gonna, Horror Story. Then you got like, the horror fans. It's like I got it's like them. hold my beer. Hold my beer. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, so the American Horror Story, as of this, or actually this is going to come out. So this is out Tuesday. It should be coming out tomorrow, actually, as of this recording. So enjoy American Horror Story Apocalypse. I cannot wait for that. And what are we talking about next? Black Ops 4. Um, now we're talking about the Battle Royale 4 uh, first or the zombies? Cause... So this new Royale map includes zombies. No. They got a new Royale map that's including... So I'm going to be honest with you, I have really not been following this game at all. And, I, and that's just like me losing interest in Call of Duty as of late. Alrighty, this is the part where I come in. There you go. Okay, so first off, where we stop... Uh, so are we going to talk about the original crew? Or are we going to talk about the new crew that came in right now? Because uh, as far as I remember, that the old crew or the Origins crew that they start off is in Revelations. So in Revelations, they do the whole Easter egg. Uh, they kill off the Apothecans because uh, of Maxis getting with uh, Sophia, you know. So, let me tell you what I last played. Okay, I don't even think I played a lot of Black Ops <laughs> 3 stuff. But here's what I remember, okay. I love the original story from World at War and uh. Black Ops 1. And I think it ended in Black Ops 2. Um, what really pissed me off is when they rebooted them. Now... They were they're still badass and I and I like that, but when they rebooted him, I wasn't getting that same vibe I felt from Black Ops One. You're talking about the uh, Origins crew. Well, that's Origins. The reboot. When uh, Origins first came out, you. when they rebooted them, I just wasn't getting that same vibe, and it just it just felt weird. So here's the thing, with the Origins crew, they're a whole different universe, you know. So it's a multiverse. It's kind a of multiverse. Thing. Yes. Okay. So as you can see, their story from Origins all the way to Revelations. Their whole um, plan is to uh, set things right, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but along the way, they have to um, cross travel different dimensions. That's why that's where you have Mob of the Dead. That's where you have like um, Zetsubo. You also have 
and go Rod Crovey, you know, and go Rod Crovey, you you even fight um Nikolai. Nikolai. Yeah. yeah, is that the yeah. one that in the beginning they play Ace of Spades? Mm-hmm. The Ace of Spades. That that yeah. got me so hyped when I watched that trailer. Yeah, so I mean, if you like, if you go throughout the storyline, it's just them actually just trying to survive because you know Rick Toffin doesn't want to die. If you yeah. if you see Revelations on how it ends now, yeah. So there was a couple things, and even in this new trailer, I saw that there was Rick Toffin killed Rick Toffin, then another Rick Toffin killed another Rick Toffin, and then in this newest trailer. It looks like another Rick Toffin killed another Rick Toffin. Like, what's going on with that? All right, so in The Giant, I, re- I recall this. In The Giant, you know, the old Rick Toffin, your favorite, or yeah. from the original he's crew. He's evil. Yeah. So, he, you know, he's trying to, uh, as as I remember, he's trying to get, like, power. He's killing off uh, the daughter uh, and Maxis off. Yeah. This is Samantha and Maxis. Samantha Maxis. This is way, like, this is the original storyline that we yeah. like, grew up. Like, okay, what's going on? Trying to develop. But then, all of a sudden, the origin crew shows up, right? And then Rick Toffin feels like he brought the power, you know, he's like, he's going to reveal like the ultimate power. They tell him, don't open it. And he opens it and it's him, but it's yeah. the origins, right? He kills him off and they start off a new storyline. So that's how it starts off. Now, what happened to Dempsey? Did Rick Toffin kill the old Dempsey, the old Nikolai, so the old Takeo? They, they had to collect their souls inside the, uh, the little sphere. Yeah. They collected their souls so they can take them to like, I think it's like heaven or something like that. I forgot like the whole storyline. So they're dead then. They're gone. Their souls had to be purified, and then they turned into children. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they were taken to, um, it's basically God. I forgot his name, though. Mo- Monty. They took him to Monty's play okay. thing. Uh, there, it's another little pocket universe type thing or universe. And so all of a sudden, the when they wiped out everything, the f- our origin crew didn't disappear, right? And then he's like, you know what? Maybe I could just erase you myself. But then all of a sudden, they be- go all the way. No, he sends him back in time. And become the original origin origins crew with the staffs and everything. I don't know if you follow about that. It's a it's a very yeah, long I remember, story. To I remember the staffs from Origins. I played Origins. Uh, I I don't remember too much of Black Ops. 3. What did I play? I think it was World War Two. Have you played the World War Two zombies? Yeah. Is that the one where you fight uh, like a dragon or you fight like a giant monster or something like that? If you do the Easter egg right, the first map. What map was that? There was a map. I don't remember. I want to say it was World of War Two because there was a map where you fight like a giant monster. If it's part of the Easter egg and shit, and you have to keep going in a circle and trying to kill him and stuff like that. And I can't remember. Honestly, I'm mixing up in- Infinity, Infinite Warfare. Infinite, uh, yeah, Infinite Warfare. I'm mixing up. We don't, we don't, talk, about, we don't <laughs> talk about that game. Let's <laughs> <laughs> talk about. Right. I'm just. I, I. I just. I. I haven't really been following Call of Duty too much. And cool. that's due to just it practically sucking lately. <laughs> oh, to leave it off, I'm so hyped for uh, Black Ops Four. Yeah, Black Ops Four, the zombies. It's called what's it called? It's not Mob of the Dead. It's a, uh, it's the remake of Mob of the Dead. Ah man, I'm so hyped for it too. Mob of the Dead was a good map, and it had map, yeah. You had uh, a lot of you had a star-studded cast. You had Sal uh, Deluca, Sal Deluca, um, Ron Perlman, uh, Jeff Goldblum was in there. And what's that girl from Austin Powers? I forgot her name, but she's beautiful in real life. <laughs> but Black Ops 4 is getting a Royale map, which includes zombies on it. I don't know about this Royale stuff either. Can you explain to me, like, how are the zombies are incorporated? Do they kill you? Do they go after you? How is that going to work? Well, how's the Royale going to work out? Well, if you any standard battle royale, you got your 100 players going at each other. You know, the, first, um, the last one to survive or, the you know, to kill everybody wins. That's how it works. I, I don't know if you play Fortnite. Yeah, I don't play Fortnite, yeah, but I want to say that it's probably going to be something where you kill zombies or zombie. You, you're the zombie. You got to kill everyone else. Uh, hopefully, they made it as in if you die, you turn into a zombie. You got to kill the rest. Yeah, of Yeah, so that makes sense. That'd be fun. Um, I didn't read too much on it. I just thought it was an interesting topic to talk about. So, yeah, Black Ops Four Royale map including zombies coming. When does that game come out? Next month. October. October next month. So yeah. Um. Jessica Chastain gets very bloody on the set of it, Chapter 2. And I got to see this picture because I want to see what's going on with her. But if you guys are not aware, Jessica Chastain is playing Beverly. Uh, she's older. And in it, uh, Chapter 1, uh, Beverly has that one scene where she just gets blood gushed all over her in the in bathroom. In the bathroom, yeah. Yeah, so I'm very interested to see if they're going to do something similar to that. Um See, that scene uh, tripped me out because I wasn't sure if they were in the bathroom and you know how only they could see the blood, right? Yeah. 
Are they really cleaning something up, or only they can see it? I think only they can see that, but uh, it's going to be one of those things where that blood will be there forever, and they only they can see it, so they, they clean it up so they don't have to see it no more. But I don't know. It's one of those things where um, someone gets uh, – only they can see it. I don't know if the adults would be able to see it. The, adult, the adults probably just think they're going crazy. Here's the photo. I think she's hugging the director or someone. But she's got blood all over her. And then we got to show it to the guys, right? You know. The guys. The audience. I will show them real quick um, on the screen. But, yeah, it's interesting. It, and if I don't show it, I will explain it. Um, and that is, it shows her hugging the director. She's got blood on her arms, blood on her head, for, forehead, and on her head. Um, and yeah, she's covered with a blanket. Just maybe shot a bloody, gory scene, huh? Uh, maybe they killed it. Maybe they killed. Or well, they do kill. They do kill Pennywise in the second part. So I'm curious to see too. They said they're not going to do the whole spider thing at like, Damn the it. original. You serious? But I'm hoping that it's a lie and they just make it way better and scarier. Well, I mean, the ending for the first one was actually pretty... It was better than the original. Uh, I feel with this movie, the remake, they're doing more related to the book because the first movie was a TV series, so they couldn't do too much as far as R-rating stuff. Mm -hmm. And this, it seems like this one, since it's a movie, they can get away with more R-rated stuff and stay loyal to the book. See, but our, what I liked about the first one was the, the children cast. And they were funny, they were witty, you know. And they're going to be back in the next one. Really? They will be back in the next one. Okay, that's it, I'm if, watching it. If you guys Hands seen down. it, the original It, uh, in the, the second part of that movie, they do have flashbacks with the kids. Mm -hmm. The adults all have, as they go different places in Derry and see stuff, they, they have flashbacks. So all the kids will be returning this. I don't think they'll be as much as the adults in this one, you know, but they're going to be, they'll have appearances mm -hmm. as they go on. Um, and with that, if you guys are not familiar, in the original It, as the the adults come back and they start looking at areas of dairy, start meeting up with other people, they get flashbacks and stuff. And so that flashback will trigger the the kids. So um, that's cool. And I and I hope they, they come out with a picture eventually of the kids standing with the adult versions of themselves because it would be a good little side-by-side -side comparison, you know. Um, very much looking forward to it. Uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead. Did you watch that show? Yeah, I did, and I loved it. it. I'm telling you, the funniest, um, the funniest episode that I thought, and like my favorite, was the one where Ash had a little Ash puppet on his where his yeah. chainsaw was, and then the little Ash puppet has his own chainsaw. It's <laughs> funny that you bring that up because every every horror convention, the last two horror conventions I've been to, Scare LA and Midsummer Scream, I've seen people walk around with that puppet. See, it's it's amazing. It's funny. It's just, I mean, I don't know. I find it funny. <laughs> and I've I've tempted every time to try to buy it, but I've just never. I've been broke. So. You can buy it. You can buy it. I'm gonna buy it. Buy I'm bring it. It next time. You can buy it. Yeah. Uh, but that that I think that's just hilarious. But uh, the complete series, if you guys are not aware, season three was his last season. Um, the or was it? I mean, did you see the ending? Yeah, I did see the ending, but Bruce Campbell came out and. Stars canceled the show, um, wow. and so that was, and so they set it up so it was like a parody of like this is what we're gonna do next, but we're not, we're never gonna do it. Um, so that's horrible. My heart, that hurts. yeah, and 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 that I had the same reaction, dude. When I saw that season finale, I was like, I want to see what happens next now. Right? What's gonna? It's like a Mad Max type vibe now with the freaking Ash vs. Evil. That's gonna be awesome, but. The complete series has a uh, is hitting Blu-ray. The complete box set series, all three seasons of the Stars original show, is going to be hitting uh, Blu-ray just in time for Halloween. So next month. Yay! <laughs> so I think I might have to pick that up. I you know what, if you if you pick it up, let's have a let's have a series marathon. Binge. Just a binge yeah. the whole thing. As you can see over there in that little corner, I got a couple. I'm starting to collect uh, TV wow. shows. You need to take a picture, show it to the audience, man. Look that that's just books. Those are books. Those are graphic novels. I'll talk about that. Look at that. It's amazing. Yeah, all those graphic novels. But in that third shelf, I'm just starting to collect some TV series. I got the first two seasons of Walking Dead, season two and three of How I Met Your Mother, season one of uh, Eastbound and Down. I think like the first five or four seasons of Workaholics, and the second season of Sons of Anarchy. And I've bought all those. I've bought all those from a, a YouTuber I watch called Cinema Sickness. And uh, yeah. Sells them for That's very fun. good prices. I don't binge watching, man. Yeah, um, I've seen all those seasons. I'm just I'm buying them as I go. I'm getting really good deals on them. I'm getting them for like five bucks, ten bucks only. Yeah, that's cheap, dude. But uh, I'm very excited, very fortunate. So, 
Yeah, what are we talking about next? Haunted Mansion. You like that ride? Yeah. I mean, it's alright, you know? It's a little slow. It's slow in the beginning, but then it picks up at the end. I like the ending part. The ending part freaked me out once. I'm telling you, man, I was little. I looked at it, and they said, you know, it says that you'll take one of the ghosts with you. Yeah. And then the motherfucker's right there, right beside you. Yeah. He tripped me out because he was standing right there, right in front of me. <laughs> and I was like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> um, some of the famous characters in that ride are getting Funko Pops pretty soon. Uh, speaking of Funko Pops, I'm starting to collect those too, man. I got a couple up there. I like the Spider-Man Homecoming one, the, homemade, the homemade suit. suit. Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got two Pennywises up there, a Demogorgon, Deadpool, Bob Ross, an Assassin's Creed, and an Avengers Infinity War, Captain America. Um, the next to come on my list are two Thanoses and uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Let's talk about the classic Thanos and the Infinity War Thanos. I got Infinity War Thanos with the gauntlet and then a Thanos that they showed in Guardians of the Galaxy that's uh, exclusive. So I'm very much looking forward to that. The purple one. Purple, yeah, when he's purple, <laughs> purple, so. But uh, Funko, I, I've recently, I, you know what? I, I used to tell myself I used to hate them, but then secretly I always liked the way they That's looked. a love-hate thing that you had for them. It, it, it was a love-hate, and then finally I just gave them, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to start collecting them, and. Um, yeah, they're I'm cool. addicted to them. Yeah. I am addicted to these Funko Pops. I only collect the six inch ones, or no, not the. Yeah, it is the six inch ones. Like the, the big ones. Big ones, yeah. Yeah, I got the Tardis. I also got the um, the Griffin from. Now those are hard to find, though, aren't they? Uh, they are, but they have in my GameStop for the time. GameStop, GameStop and then Hot Topic. Yeah. Hot Topic is like Funko Central. The next one I want is the Sesame Street Big Bird. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, I got that Demogorgon. That's probably the biggest one I have. And it's only because of the way it is. I'm jealous. But, uh, yeah, I think that one cost me like 15 But usually they've been costing me like 10 11 bucks. But um, I, there's a lot of iconic characters in the Haunted Mansion. And, yeah, of course, the Hitchhiking Ghost would be awesome to have mm-hmm. this Funko series. Um, the Tombstones would be awesome. The Bride would be awesome. A lot of characters in Haunted Mansion would just be awesome. You know, the ball, Madame Leona. They do have awesome. it, right? Yeah. What's I mean, up? no. They should, but how would they make it? Just like what? her table, her table, and then maybe the head, be like a big funk. <laughs> I don't know, but I think it'd be cool. I'm very much looking forward to that series coming out, and I cannot wait. Um, Henry Cavill, if you guys don't know who Henry Cavill is, the guy who plays Superman, currently in the movies, he just got casted as a girl in the. Have you ever played The Witcher? No. It's uh, a you know you're well aware of it though. It's a game. It's a medieval kind of game. You fight dragons and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Netflix is developing a series, and they just casted Henry Cavill as the lead guy. Will it do good, though? I mean, I like him in um, Mission I, Impossible and Superman. I have not seen Mission Impossible yet, it's pretty and good. I really want to. I love the Mission Impossible series, and I have not seen that, and I really want to see it. It was good, though? It was really good. Uh, not many spoilers, but Henry Cavill does a great, you know, He's, he's, he's the, the bad guy. guy. He's, 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 the he's bad technically guy. the bad guy. I mean, you one can't. Because well, he's hired by the uh, the CIA yeah. to take out. Yeah, uh, to take out your Tom, Tom Cruise's Cruise. Tom Cruise's crew, right? Yeah. So, um, but I mean, he's he's not like a bad guy. I mean, he was hired. So. Yeah, yeah. That's why I look at it too. But uh, there's that one scene where in the trailer where he just like does the thing and it makes. The See, noise. that's a badass. I even look. No lie, I tried that too. I didn't look as badass, but oh well. I tried. No, I know. And he turns <laughs> it off and he's just like, oh my god, he is amazing. But, uh, yeah, he just got cast as a girl in the Witcher series that Netflix is doing, and I'm very much looking forward to it, honestly. And now, is it Geralt or Geralt? Ger- Geralt? I don't know how to pronounce it. I, I, I have the damn game. We'll, leave, have, it, we'll leave it to the audience. Leave it to the audience. Um, and, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it. I don't know when it's supposed to hit Netflix. I Being that they just casted him and just announced it, it's going to probably be in the next year or two, so... We'll see. Hopefully, it's supposed to be a live action series. Anything medieval. Um, hopefully, there's dragons in it, just like the game. That'd be awesome. Trolls. Yeah, stuff just, like that. Just, just not like um, uh, Game of Thrones. Game of Th- that's going to be the next Game of Thrones. When <laughs> game of Thrones ends. Because it's supposed to be ending next season. Uh, it's supposed to be the series finale, so that's probably going to take no, over. No incest, please, please. No incest. No, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing him uh, play that character. The last thing we're going to talk about um, is George Romero, the late, great George Romero. His uh, fantastic masterpiece, Dawn of the Dead, just turned 40 this week. Now, how old is George Romero? George Romero's dead. Oh, shit. You know what? How old would he be today? Oh, man. I, I want to say in his, like, 80s or 90s, dude, because when he died, man, it was just like a shocker. Like, fuck, he died? That sucks, man. Horror icon, George Romero, uh, basically created zombies. And, I mean, have you seen uh, George A. Romero's um, inspiring map in Call of Duty? Yes. Call, I, that's one of my favorite maps. Call of the Dead. Uh, 
Call of the Dead, and that was one of the first maps that included uh, Avenged Sevenfold. Mm -hmm. Not a big Avenged Sevenfold fan, but from the zombie songs and a couple of other songs that they've written, uh, it's just whatever's to me. I think uh, uh, Bats Country, is it? That's my favorite song from them. Which song? Bats Country or Bats? Or what map was that? No, 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 no. It's, uh, it's a song from Avenged Sevenfold. Avenged Sevenfold. See, I don't even really... My heart, my soul... My heart. My but yeah, soul. but it was a really good map. Honestly, they included George A. Romero as a bad guy. Or, yeah. you know, every time you would shoot him or shank him, he would turn into zombie mode and you had to kill him off. Me off. You know how much that sucked doing the Easter egg? I didn't, I didn't even know how to kill him, man. Honestly, there was like glitches saying you can get the VR 11 to shoot him. And no, he... you could kill him. There was no glitches. You just, it took a lot of ammo. You could do it with the ray gun. You could do it with the, uh, the human, the change the human. Yeah. That took a lot. Or you can do it with the exploding sniper. That was OP. See, what they said is uh, you have to get him in the water, right? He comes out, you shoot him, he turns into a zombie, get him back in the water, and it would just take that. You could only hurt him once every time he got out of the water. Or no, if you, kept, if you kept shooting him while he was in rage mode, which sucked all the time, <laughs> yeah. um, he would eventually die, but eventually he would come back to life. He's like, I'm going on break. Yeah. Uh, here it says he would have been 77. Oh, he was pretty young if he, when he died. Then. Yeah. Um... I just saw his son, too, George C. Romero, or I don't know if it's his son or if it's someone related to him, but he runs the company now for uh, George Romero, George A. Romero, and he was at Scare LA. He had his own panel and everything, so that was really cool. Um, but Dawn of the Dead, one of the most classic zombie movies, and then I got a remake that he did, which is the more infamous one where we saw zombies run, the zombies were more brutal and stuff like that. I don't know if you've seen that. That was the remake of uh, Dawn of the Dead, which was really good, and that came out, I think, like in the early 2000s. But George A. Romero will be uh, going down in history as the the godfather of zombies. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Easily. Um, <laughs> Not a fan of, uh, what is it, World War Z? World War I like the World War I got a poster right there. Oh, my goodness. Look like at this. Yeah. I love that movie. Honestly, the zombies in no, that movie No, they're going to be insane. making another one pretty soon, too. Because it's a book series. I actually want to read the book. And the movie was fantastic. I can only imagine how the book is. Have you seen that one picture where, like, there's supposedly a cat inside of the zombies? Just oh, really? Just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to end the show. Uh, but before we do, I want to give a, a special uh, gift for all the audience. And that is a 14-day free trial to Shudder. Now, Shudder uh, hooked us up to hook you guys up for a 14-day free trial of their streaming service. If you guys are not aware of Shudder, Shudder is a horror movie streaming service where they stream some of the most iconic horror movies, originals, um, B-movies that are iconic and stuff like that, all horror, 24-7 on their website, Shudder.com, or they have the app on the phone, or I think they have it on smart TVs and Xboxes and stuff and consoles and stuff. Um... And they gave me a special promo code just for my listeners for a 14-day free trial. That is promo code MINDLESS for uh, Shutter 14-day free trial. You go to Shutter.com slash uh, sign up. Sign up using promo code MINDLESS and you'll get a 14-day free trial for all my listeners. That is promo code MINDLESS for a 14-day free trial of Shutter. Don't miss out on this opportunity because this opportunity honestly is worth it. I uh, have I, I am a subscriber to Shutter happily to say, and uh, when I'm when I'm at work and it's slow, or I'm at lunch, I like to throw on a horror movie sometimes, or even when I'm at home editing or something like that, I'll throw on Shutter. They got some cool originals, um, some awesome horror movies, old school. They had a Stephen King thing going on for a while, so check it out. Shutter.com. Sign up using promo code Mindless for a 14 day free trial. You heard that? Go ahead and get your Shutter on. Get your Shutter on. Yeah. With that being said, we're going to end this episode, this 20th edition of the Mindless Horror Podcast. Man, I can't believe we've already done 20 episodes and you're just getting started on your first one, huh? I mean, we'll get, we'll, if you think about it, 20 is not 30. a lot. We're going to hit 30, then 40, then And then 50, 100, and then 100. just 200, keep going. and then it's not going to stop, man. And yeah. then we're just... The grind's going to keep going. I And I and I love this, I love doing this podcast because this podcast brings horror news to the horror fans and that's how i look at it and so yeah, and then some people who are not so much horror fans you know they get filled in and they get uh you know then, then they get they, they get, get their daily dose of horror excited for or in our case our weekly dose of horror but oh, yeah. they get excited for the news and they start researching it stuff and they become horror fans and so that's why that's how i like to look at things i like to look at the positive side of things uh stay tuned in the channel pretty soon because i want to get together with uh jeremiah pretty soon and maybe do some scary pranks 
eventually down the I'm line. I'm so down, man. <laughs> eventually down the line, we're going to get something going, going to get talking again and stuff like that. Very much looking forward to it. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to the Mindless Word Podcast. I am your host, Anthony. And I'm your host, Jeremiah. And we will see you on episode 21.